Today's talk focuses on Nikola made a statement that Tesla was engaging in fraud and that the performance of truck and roadster were impossible. Today I'm here to announce that they're right. It is impossible, but it's not quite fraud. So I was kind of stunned when I read both what superclasses were and what they can do. And what I'm going to do is just make a couple of comments about what I learned. And then I'm going to do uh, attachments both at the bottom, you know, <coughs> as, as I put in my description. And then I'm also going to include some text that I'm baking into the video so you can kind of read through some of the goods and bads of supercapacitors and what they do or don't do um, because I think it's worth the time to understand what's going on here because I think it's a game changer, world changer technology. So the basic part of what I wanted to talk about supercapacitors is that what's mind blowing is that when, it, when you work with lithium ion, you're actually allowing a battery to use a chemical process to move um, <clears throat> electrons back and forth in terms of charge and recharge. In the case of supercapacitors, you've actually been experiencing supercapacity without realizing it. And an example of it is static electricity. So when you walk over to that door in the winter and you've walked on some carpeting and you get that charge, that's supercapacity in action. And what's interesting about this is that the charge transfer is, 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 um, is a lot faster than the transfer that occurs uh, with lithium ion batteries because it's not a chemical transfer of those electrons. It's a sort of an electric uh, transfer as you get when you get that charge that quickly. So if you think about it, what if you could charge your battery with that kind of speed versus the current speed of a very slow charging that we're talking about? So I um, sort of read on this a little bit, watched a couple of videos, and determined that um, this is a key part of why solid state really works for the next stage of battery development and progress. And if, in fact, Tesla does have this in the new battery, I think it's a huge game changer. And sort of this brings me to my reaction to both the Roadster and the Semi was a little bit like what a lot of other people had been saying. Um, when you look at the Roadster, based on the range, based on how fast it goes, et cetera, et cetera, I felt like none of the men numbers made sense based on the technology that we knew about that they were using. So I figured either this sucker doesn't exist and it's ridiculous, or they've come up with some things that nobody has or is doing anything with yet that changes the game. And I think this supercapacitor blend with lithium ion is very much that change. And it, it's an evidence in the Roadster, and that, that, is, that car is mind blowing in terms of everything that they've listed. 600 miles of range versus a similar battery would be about 300. It can go 250 miles an hour. I mean, every statistic from that car places, places it in realms that are only sitting on tracks with monster cars that aren't allowed on the road. So again, I was trying to figure out how in the world are they doing this? Is it a fake, et cetera, et cetera. Now, switching to the semi. Um, obviously, they're using the same battery in the semi. And I have to admit, there's a huge amount of reporting that's going on relative to the semi that says, hey, if the technology works, then this. 
And they're also suggesting is because Tesla's missed so many deadlines, the suggestion has been perhaps Tesla's lying about this or it's fraud or it's impossible as Nikola has described. But the reality is if in fact Tesla is using this new technology, which is the combination of supercapacitors with the thing of ion in their batteries, the truck that's described is no problem. And not only is it no problem, but one of the characteristics of supercapacitors is they actually like lower temperatures, which I think is a form factor that has been a big deal, namely that uh, there's been big problems going on relative to can, super can batteries operate in colder temperatures. And I think that's even one of the benefits that's listed that's an advantage of supercapacitors over regular lithium ion batteries. So I have to admit, I feel sort of excited a little bit for Tesla. I also feel kind of led astray a little bit because when Tesla came out with a new battery, the way it was described to us was that it was simply um, lithium ion batteries uh, with a more, uh, with a higher density and, and a taller battery, which is a 2170. But there was no mention of the fact that there was a switch up from old to new technology and that this new technology is potentially a huge game changer that sort of changes everything that's going on when it comes to automobiles uh, and uh, as well as trucks. So um, this actually answers another question I've been wondering, asking about, which was, well, why, why is it that everyone is saying this thing doesn't work properly and it's, it's got to be a fraud? And there are all these big companies that have gone and driven the vehicle and had their engineers go through it. And now they're ordering. So I was thinking either, you know, they bamboozled a whole bunch of very smart people or they, in fact, can do what they say they're going to do. And the impact is going to be game changing uh, on the world because of how much value there is in the change they're making. So I'm kind of intrigued because um, the, the last question that pops to mind is, how are they going to deal with the Model 3 relative to these supercapacitors? And and I guess what they could do is just, you know, they don't have to use as much battery or material to get the battery done for the, for the Model 3. Um, but it kind of feels to me like most of what's been going on, at least I can read in the press, is associated with this technology, <coughs> excuse me, being delivered to the trucks and the Roadster. But... Um, I'm just wondering if it's got all these amazing traits, why not let the Roadster have some monster performance? And I, I guess the answer to that is obviously if you make the Roadster a killer like the, uh, I'm scared, sorry, if you make the Model 3 as deadly as the Roadster is with this new battery, you pretty much blow away any sales of the Model S or the Model X. So it's obviously interesting that they've got to sort of dummy down the car in order to make sure that they still you know, have uh, other vehicles that will sell anymore. So <clears throat> I, um, I'll i let you guys take a look at some of the material I'm going to post with uh, the page. I think what I've been doing now in sort of our new iteration is sort of do a quick look at, uh, at our materials at the front so you can do a pause to read through. And I'll put it at the end as well so that, you know, if you feel like reading it uh, there versus pausing or anything, you'll have it in two places. And uh, also, <clears throat> we've uh, recently introduced our TeslaFanInsight.com, and I think I'll be posting some things on supercapacitors there because I think that uh, we all need to, you know, get a little grasp of what's going on here. So basically, Tesla has now introduced solid-state batteries in, in many properties uh, via multiple vehicles. And I, for the... For the full bore of solid state, it wasn't supposed to happen for another four or five years, but um, they're introducing it now. It's a game changer. It's devastating. And until you understand what's going on, you would assume that it's completely fraud and impossible. So keep your hats on. I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out over the next few months because I think it's, it's mind-blowingly, amazingly cool. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. I look forward to any and all comments. Please be respectful in your comments because we will delete them and block you.
if you go crazy on, on, on the comments on our page. Um, thanks once again for taking time out. Au revoir, la hip rose. Tous ma good. And uh, again, thanks again for visiting with us and look forward to our next conversation, which I think is going to be someplace in a supercapacitive world.